Physics is one of those classes that really, really requires a lot of effort and a lot of reading. Most people who take physics are engineering majors. I know this because I taught a lot of calculus courses and a lot of the students in my calculus courses take physics and most of them are engineering majors. So you'd be surprised. There's actually not that many people who are actual physics majors. Same thing with math, right? There's not that many people who are math majors. Math majors and physics majors are pretty rare. So this is a book that you can use to learn physics. And in this video, we're going to take a look at it. It's called Physics. This is an older edition. It's by G. M. Coley. There's newer editions out now, and I don't really think it matters so much um, what edition you get. What I'll do is I'll leave a link in the description of this video um, to an edition of this book in case you want to check it out because you can use this to teach yourself physics. It's got so much material in it, it's pretty ridiculous. Physics Principles with Applications, Douglas C. Giancoli, 5th edition. Physics was the first class in college uh, that I took where I felt that even when I worked really, 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 really hard, I wasn't getting the results I wanted. And I think everyone gets to that point, and I got to that point in physics. And looking back, it's because I didn't really know calculus, um, and my algebra was weak, and my math was really bad. So if your math is weak, or your algebra is bad, and your calculus is bad, then you're going to struggle with physics. But if you have strong math skills and the desire to learn physics, then I think that this book might be worth it because you can learn some physics. Let's take a look at the contents. Introduction, science and creativity, physics and its relation to other fields, models, theories, and laws, measurement and uncertainty, units, standards, and the SI system, converting units, etc. Describing motion in one dimension, so um, kinematics in one dimension. So average velocity, instantaneous velocity, acceleration. So these are all things you study in calculus. However, the way they're presented in physics books is always a little bit different from how they're presented in a calculus class. And it's kind of fun because, um, you know, as a person who's taught calculus many, many, many times, you always, you know, encounter students who are like, oh, we do it this way in physics. And it's always fun for students to see uh, the different perspectives. Kinematics in two dimensions. So a little bit more involved there. And then motion and force dynamics. So force, Newton's first law of motion, mass, Newton's second law of motion, Newton's third law of motion. Let's turn the page here, look at some more of the contents. This has a lot of physics, okay? So this is an incredible amount of information. Circular motion, gravitation. And then we have work and energy. And there's other good physics books too. This is just one that I'm pretty sure um, the copies uh, are fairly affordable on the internet. So if you want to buy one that's inexpensive, I think this one might be a good choice right now. Uh, linear momentum. Also, it's a good book. Some of the subscribers here have uh, left comments about this book. Rotational motion. And over here we have bodies in equilibrium, so elasticity and fracture. Then we have fluids. Sorry, I have to just give it a whiff here. Ah, it's a nice modern, it has a nice new book smell. Even though it's old and used, the pages are really good quality. It's a good quality book, it's bound well, it's not going to fall apart. So fluids. Ooh, Pascal's Principle. Good stuff here. Vibrations and waves. Some more of the contents there. Sound. I remember studying sound when I was a student thinking, oh, I think I, I, think I liked studying sound. I, I feel like I did better on that test or something. You know, I have fond memories of sound. Uh, it's kind of funny. It was a struggle. Physics is a struggle. Temperature and kinetic theory. Heat. Heat. We have the laws of thermodynamics. A lot of content in this book, right? Electric charge and electric field. Then we have electric potential and electric energy. Electrical currents. DC circuits. I have a friend who is 
it's it's funny. He's he's not a physics guy, but like he knows so much about electricity. Um, and he can he can build things. I mean, he's he's built several things. He's, he builds all kinds of like circuits and stuff for like actual things he uses in the real world. It's pretty amazing. Magnetism. I was thinking of the X Men for some reason. <laughs> we think about physics, right? So. Uh, electromagnetic induction and Faraday's law, AC circuits. Electromagnetic waves. I actually have some of Faraday's books. Light, geometric optics. The wave nature of light. You see, it's a, just a, it's a super thick book here. Optical instruments. Special theory of relativity. Then early quantum theory and models of the atom. Quantum mechanics of atoms. So you see it has a lot of, kind. it keeps going, there's more, there's more. It's just so much, so much knowledge in here. Molecules and solids, nuclear physics and radioactivity, nuclear energy, effects and uses of radiation, elementary particles, and then we have astrophysics and cosmology. And there's a mathematical review. So for all of the math people, this is a math channel. So <laughs> there's the stuff you might be familiar with. If you don't know any physics, you'll probably know some of this stuff, right? So, um, you know, basic stuff there. You can see it zoom in here. So you can see some of the math um, that is reviewed in this book. Um, the book has answers to the odd numbered problems, which is really nice. So they're in the back of the book. Here's an example. So you can see um, some of the examples in this book. So a kicked football. So there's a, a image there. And it says a football is kicked at an angle of theta naught. I remember the first time learning that that's pronounced theta naught. was in a physics class. They should have said naught. I'm like, oh, the zero is naught. It's pronounced naught. Theta naught equals 37 degrees. With the velocity of 20 meters per second, as shown in figure 322, which is which is the figure up here. Okay. And it says calculate the maximum height, the time of travel before the football hits the ground, how far away it hits the ground, the velocity vector at the maximum height, and the acceleration vector at the maximum height. Assume the ball uh, leaves the uh, the foot at ground level. So pretty cool, right? And it just goes through everything and gives you formulas. It says, this question may seem difficult because there are so many questions, <laughs> but we can deal with them one at a time. I, I love Jim Coley. It's great. I don't know why I thought that was so funny. We take the y direction as positive upward. The components of the initial velocity are, so it goes through, uses the formulas. At maximum height, the velocity is horizontal. So V sub y is equal to zero. And this occurs at the time. So it goes through and... Uh, it just explains everything really well. It's a really good book, you know, and the, the use of color is good too, like in the pictures and it's just a modern textbook on, on physics, you know, where you can listen, look at all these examples, right? It's just great. You can sit down and actually learn physics with this book, which, which look at even more. Look at all these examples. It's ridiculous. So you get a lot of examples with a book like this, which I think is, so there's a summary at the end of, of the chapter. There's some questions here, then you have some exercises, and you get plenty of exercises so you can practice your skills and what you've learned in each, in each chapter. I mean, look at all those exercises, right? Tons, and you have general problems here. Let's go to the back of the book so you can see the answers. I think it's, I think they're back over here. Let's see here. And they just give you the answers. They don't give you like, here we go. They don't give you like the full solutions or anything like that, um, but it's okay. At least you can check your work and it's really nice. And you get answers to the odd numbered problems, not all of them, but there's so many problems that it makes it worth it. So it's just a solid textbook on physics, right? So yeah, physics, it's awesome. So much in here, you can learn so much knowledge. You can spend months, months, years, working from this book, right? I mean, think about that, right? How many, how much time you can spend on this book and so much, so much knowledge. Anyway, it's just an affordable book on physics um, that you may have never heard of. It's the one by Giancoli and I recommend it. If you want to learn mathematics, I do have math courses on my website, uh, mathsorcerer.com. The courses are actually on the Udemy platform, 
But if you do decide to learn some math, um, please use the links from my website as it helps me. And um, I've lowered the price to make it uh, as low as possible. So I'm pretty sure when you click the links, you'll get like a low price. So yeah, mathsorcerer.com. Also, if you are not a subscriber and you feel like you found any value in this content and you want to subscribe, uh, feel free to hit the subscribe button if you want to. And I'll leave a link in the description to this book in case you want to check it out. And if you take anything away from this video, it should be that this is a good book on physics. Um, it's got a lot of examples. It's modern in the way it's written. Uh, it has answers to all the odd numbered problems. I think it's an excellent choice for someone who wants to self-study physics or complement um, their physics course with an extra book. It's just a great book to have in your collection. It's Physics by Gene Coley. Good luck. Take care. Keep doing mathematics.